Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Coding Decoded. My name is Anjit Rudeja. I am working as Technical Architect SD4 at Adobe and here I present the fourth question of the weekly contest 294. We have already solved the previous three questions. If you are interested in watching them, then the link is in the description below. This question is sum of total strength of wizards. Here in this question, we are given an array of integers that represents the strength of each wizard given in the array. Also the question states, for a contiguous group of wizards, the total strength is defined as the product of two things. The first one is the strength of the weakest wizard in that group and the total of all individual strength of wizards in that group. What do we need to do? We need to return the sum of total strength of all contiguous groups of wizard that exist in this array. So here they have provided us with an example. I'll be walking you through this example as well as the algorithm to go about it why the presentation so let's quickly hop on to it lead code 2281 sum of total strength of wizards it's a hard level question on lead code and i would like to rate this question in extremely hard category also in case if you have any doubt understanding this question or if you know want to ask anything from me in general please feel free to ping on the telegram group or the discord server of coding decoded both the links are stated below now let's get back to understanding the question. Let's try to express the question in mathematical format. The question is asking us to find the total of what all sub arrays does exist in our input array. We need to find its sum and we need to multiply it with the minimum element that exists in that sub array. So for example, you are given a very big array. What do we need to do? We need to identify each and every sub array that exists in that array and then you have to identify its sum, the total sum of that particular sub array, total sum of total of that sub array. And along with this, you need to identify the minimum element that exists in that sub array. So once you have that particular element, you need to multiply the minimum one with the total sum of that sub array and you need to find the output of it and you need to do it for each and every possibility of sub array that exists in this array. So this is what the question is question is asking us to do. Uh, now let's talk about the time complexity of the naive approach. So for identifying each and every sub array that exists in my input array, the time complexity would be order of n square. For finding the sum of that particular sub array, the time complexity would be order of n. And along with it, for finding the minimum element as well, the time complexity would be order of n. So the total time complexity becomes order of n cube, which is quite expensive. Can we do something better than this? The answer is yes. How? Let's talk about it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to write the same expression in different format. Instead of going by this route, for each sub array, we identify the minimum element. Let's assume each element acting as the minimum element. Then we find out the total sum of all the sub arrays it covers. If we are able to identify this up, then our work is done. So the equation reduces to summation of, our e, assuming each element is acting as the minimum element, we identify the sum of all sub arrays where this element is acting as that minimum element. If we are able to do this, then our work is done. So the problem reduces to finding out the sum of all sub arrays wherein the ith element is acting as the minimum element. Now comes the most interesting part of the algorithm. We will be solving this equation, the entire equation in time complexity of order of n. You heard it right. Yes, we will do it in order of n. How? Let's see that live in action. Let's hypothetically assume we have a long array and let's assume that we want to identify this is the ith element and we want up till what range towards its left and right this act, this particular element is acting as the minimum element so uh, what i'm trying to say we the first index that we need to identify will be on the left side of i that will tell us the minimum the first lower element then the current element i and this can be solved using the monotonic stack technique I'm not explaining it again here. I'm attaching the link to the playlist of monotonic stacks. There are plenty of questions on it. Uh, largest area of Instagram, daily temperatures uh, and others. Please walk, go through that concept first and come back to this problem then. Similarly, we will go and identify the next lower element towards its right. So the next lower element towards its right is represented by R. 
द नेक्स्ट लोअर एलिमेंट टूवर्ड्स इट्स लेफ्ट इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय एल सो दिस इज द रेंज ओवर विच स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम एल प्लस वन अप टिल आर माइनस वन दिस आई एथ एलिमेंट विल एक्ट एज द मिनिमम एलिमेंट नाउ वट डू वी नीड टू डू वी नीड टू आइडेंटिफाई द सम ऑफ ऑल सब आर इज दैट एग्जिस्ट इन दिस पर्टिकुलर रेंज दैट ऑल्सो इंक्लूड्स आई इन इट सो लेट्स create the first sub array and that would be equal to this one the one that i am highlighting right now so what is the sum of all elements in this particular range because we have i over here as well so it would be equal to the prefix sum of i plus 1 minus prefix of left minus 1 so we can create a prefix array and uh, for identifying this particular value it's really simple it's equal to prefix of i plus 1 minus left minus prefix of left minus 1 so let's consider the next case wherein we are considering this particular sub array and what is the prefix sum of for this particular range it's again really simple it's equal to uh, prefix of i plus 2 minus prefix of i plus 1 so let's increase uh, the i pointer further and the third array that i'm going to consider is this one so the sum of this particular range would be equal to a uh, prefix of i plus 3 minus prefix of left plus 1 pretty straight forward and let's keep on incrementing the i pointer further up till r minus 1 so we have we need to identify the sum of all these elements that lie in this particular range that i have just highlighted so it would be equal to prefix of right minus prefix of left plus 1 i hope you understood this much and now let's try to think a little bit more on these lines instead of assuming my ending terminal to be left plus 1 what i'm going to do i'm increment my leftmost pointer by by one position so that i cover all the possibilities now i have my leftmost position set at l plus 2 and again i'm going to do the same thing so look out for these equations that i have just highlighted what is the sum of all the elements in this particular range it would be equal to prefix of i plus 1 minus prefix of left plus 2 remember the left pointer is remaining constant in all these equations here as well the left pointer remained constant which was left plus 1 here it is left plus 2 let's do it for analyzing the sum of next sub array in this for this particular sub array the starting position is i plus 2 the ending position is l plus 2 and we are interested in finding out sum of all such elements it would be equal to prefix of i plus 2 minus prefix of l plus 2 let's proceed ahead and this time again we will move towards the right direction so the third sub array would be equal to this one that i have just highlighted it will start from i plus 1 end up till l plus 2 the sum of all such elements would be equal to prefix of i plus 3 minus prefix of l plus 2 and let's continue the process further this will go up till r minus 1 this when the starting index is r minus 1 the ending index is l plus 2 so if you are interested in identifying the sum of all such elements it would be equal to prefix of right minus prefix of l plus 2 we'll keep on incrementing our ending pointer one by one We, this time we will set it to l plus 3 then we will set it to l plus 4 and we will do it up till we don't reach i so let's try and analyze the equations up till i so the first sub array that should should consider is this one and it starts from i it ends up till i and it is represented by these set of equations so uh, what would be the pre, uh, how can we represent the sum starting from i ending up till i it's equal to prefix of i plus 1 minus prefix of i and then let's increment our starting pointer this would be updated to i plus 1 and uh, we are interested in finding out the sum of these two elements of it would be equal to prefix of i plus 2 minus prefix of i then moving ahead again uh, i am incrementing my starting pointer and we are interested in identifying the sum of these elements it would be equal to prefix of i minus i plus 3 minus prefix of i and it will go up till uh, we don't update our starting pointer to r minus 1 and the sum of all the elements in this particular range would be equal to prefix of right minus prefix of i now if we are able to identify the sum of all these equations and we can sum those together up our work is done let's assume that sum turns out to be equal to s and we will multiply it with the ith element and we will get 
the product value we will do it for each and every element that exists in my array can we simplify these equations the answer is yes if we carefully observe then you will see that all the positive remains the same across all the equations that we have written so here you see it, the first one is prefix of i plus 1 here as well you see the first one is prefix of i plus 1 uh, here the value is prefix of i plus 2 here the value is again prefix of i plus 2 here the value of prefix of i plus 3 here again the value is prefix of i plus 3 here the value is prefix of right here again the value is prefix of right if you carefully observe then the positive part remains the same across all the equation which is this one so if we can identify the number of elements that exist over here and we can then we can multiply those up together a prefix of i plus 1 up till prefix of right then the positive part is sorted similarly let's do it for the negative part as well again if you carefully observe then you see for each group the negative part remains the same all the elements have left plus 1 in negation in this subset here all the elements have left plus 2 in negation in the, this subset here all the elements have prefix of i in the negative part for this subset and if we can uh, sum those together up negatives all together we just need to count the number of elements that lie for this particular range and it's really simple let's try and do that up so what we will do we'll look out for total number of elements towards the left so what are the total number of elements towards the left it would be equal to uh, i minus left plus 1 plus 1 so i minus left plus 1 plus 1 that would reduce to i minus 1 let's look out for the total number of elements towards the right so uh, that would be r minus 1 minus i plus 1 it would give you r minus 1 minus i plus 1 so minus 1 minus 1 gets cancelled it, it uh, comes out to be r minus 1 the total number of elements towards right of i is r minus 1 the total number of elements towards the left is i minus l and now it's time to finalize the final equation which is this one so uh, i have clubbed all the positive parts together i have clubbed all the negative parts together and uh, the equation reduces to so if you carefully observe i'm just writing these up in a different format so it starts from i plus 1 it goes up till right and this is what i have written here it starts from i plus 1 goes up till right and i'll multiply it with i minus l and let's do it for the negative part as well it starts from left plus 1 it goes up till prefix of i so it starts from left plus 1 it goes up till prefix of i and what do we need to do along with this we need to count the number of elements that lie towards the right of it which is right minus i that we have calculated over here that simply means our work is done and uh, if you carefully observe then you will see that this is again a prefix sum of the prefix sum that we have calculated so it's a double degree prefix sum it starts up till i plus 1 and it ends up till prefix of r so what we will do in order to identify this sum up in time complexity of order of n we will look out for double degree of prefix sum so one prefix sum will be calculated using the input array and then we will create another prefix of prefix sum for identifying this sum up in order of time complexity of 1 and this is really simple this can be calculated in time complexity of 1 similarly of these two parts too now to conclude it further let's walk through the coding section and i'll exactly follow the same steps as i have just talked here here i've created the prefix sum array here i've created an array for calculating pre or prefix sum pre prefix from prefix sum and uh, using these two for loops i appropriately create those arrays up and here i have identified the range up till which my ith element is acting as the minimum element uh, using the left array this is a monotonic stack approach we have talked about this approach plenty of times in the past and if you're not aware of guys please don't solve this question uh, it's gonna be a bouncer for you similarly we have identified the range towards this right up till which the ith element is acting as the minimum element and once we have appropriately identified the left and the right range it's time to apply the formula up so i start iterating from i equals to zero i go up till i is less than now n 
and uh, this is the exact formula that I showcased in the presentation. So if you want to rewrite this formula in terms of pre or prefix sum, it's really simple. Let's do that up. Let's go back to the presentation and let me just start the slideshow. So this part is nothing but pre pre of prefix sum and the index that we will consider is write plus one minus pre of prefix sum i plus one. Similarly, you can write it for the negative part two. So this can be equated in time complexity of order of one. This is what we are doing in the coding section. So let's go back to that. So if you carefully observe, then this is nothing but pre of prefix sum write plus one minus prefix sum of i plus one. We will multiply it with i minus left index of i and similarly we will subtract this value from the prefix of i plus 1 minus prefix of left of i plus 1 and we will multiply it with right minus i. So this is the same equation as I just showed and once we are done with this we simply read on the answer variable. Let's try this up. Accept it. The time complexity of this approach is order of n and the space complexity is again equal to order of n. With this, let's wrap up today's session. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from Coding Decoded. I'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question.